All right, so we just finished with assignment one. Now we're going to introduce assignment two. You go to assignments on our Canvas page, you'll get this one page description of it. Just like we made a composite landscape in assignment one, we're going to make a composite collaged creature in assignment two. So I'm going to ask you to make a large hybrid animal in a manner you feel is most appropriate that comes from at least five different found creature composites. So I'm going to suggest to challenge all of you that we base these on Pokemon designs. Now that's not a requirement, but that's a suggestion. But what you can do is you can take this, um, if I download this as a, a PDF, you can use this link for a Pokemon image directory, or I can just Google search Pokemon image directory or a Pokedex. And whether you're a fan of Pokemon or if it's brand new to you right now, what's nice about them is they're these fantasy kind of monster creature designs that have very strong silhouettes. They have very kind of clear anatomy and strong silhouettes. And by basing your fantasy creature on one of these, whether it's one of these early Pokemon designs or much later. So there have to be, you know, well over a thousand different designs now. And some are better than others. I am going to choose Psyduck, my favorite Pokemon. So what I'll do is I'll make a little screen grab of this image and show you how I might uh, approach this project. And then in YouTube, there are lots more examples. And the reason I like using the official Pokédex images is because these are all done by professional artists. And even when the designs are really simple, you'll notice that they, when you squint, if they were just solid black silhouettes, their shapes already suggest a lot of what they are. Whether they're made of mechanical things, whether they're made of, of different birds or combinations of, of different animals together and seashells. They're great kind of fantasy concepts. And you'll see that with some of the past examples. Okay, so getting past that, what are we going to do? We're going to blend our five reference images together to form a convincing hybrid of different animals blended into one. So there's an, an, a Greek term for this called chimera. It doesn't mean a horse with like six heads. We really want the full animal to feel integrated. And we're going to start this by sketching out our initial idea and then using our sketch as a basis for the references we find. So we're, we're changing the order a little bit of how we sketch from what we did for assignment one. For assignment one, we, we made a, a sketch based on references we found. For this, we're going to sketch first and then find references based on our sketch. So let me show you exactly how that starts. I'm going to create an assignment to full. So you click here to get where you post it, which gives some directions. And it suggests Pixabay, just like we did for our landscape, for finding large enough image resource that doesn't have watermarks and is strong. But then our sketch, like this example, is going to look at the Pokemon and try to understand its anatomy. Now, this might be brand new to you. You might not have done a lot of creature design, creature creation. Character design is one of my favorite areas of, of illustration. And there are a lot of people that work in it. And compositing is a big pro part of that. So a professional example is R.J. Palmer who did the, the digital concept creature design for the, the live action Pikachu detective movie. But his method, and he's very generous showing his, his techniques through his Facebook, uh, through DeviantArt. He shows a lot of tutorials. 
but his method is really building from the skeleton on up. And what we want to do, we're not going to composite in all the skeleton, but we want to have a sense of where the spine is and where the different skeletal structures are. So we do that through sketching. And so if I have Psyduck here as a, an example, this is how I'm going to sketch it before I start looking for photographic reference in Pixabay. First, I'm going to pick a different color here. First, I want to draw the cranium because this is a vertebrate creature. And almost all creature designs have some sort of head. So the cranium is the part of the head that surrounds the brain. It's like the fishbowl for the brain. So I'm just going to sketch that in. Take his opacity down a little bit and shrink my brush. All right, next, I want to see how that cranium, if you look here, how that cranium is connected to the spine and what that spine is doing. So I'm going to go to the back of the head where the cranium connects with the neck. And I'm just going to draw down the spine. For Psyduck, it's pretty straightforward. For a creature with a tail, that spine connects with a pelvis. Oh, that's too big. And so I need to find the angle of that pelvis. And for Psyduck, that pelvis is pretty wide. Just using basic shapes here. And it connects down there. And then if you guys know how pelvises work, the tailbone is connected to the pelvis, and that extends from the spine, but Psyduck's curls out like that. So you see the tail going down through the pelvis, up through the back, into the back of the head for the spine. Then he has feet, but the feet connect with leg joints at the hip, here and here. And it's okay if I'm really loose in my sketch. I'm just trying to understand where all of this structure comes from. And then that leg joint connects with his foot, which is here. And the other foot is up and to the side, so the leg joint is actually doing this, and then bending at a really short knee, then bending back down, and then ending with a foot. And then this is actually bending back into a short knee that's covered up by the, the big pelvis, going into a knee joint, and then coming down into the foot. So these are backward bending knees. And then we have the shoulders. At an angle, just like the pelvis is at an angle, cutting across like this, pretty wide shoulders for Psyduck. And then you have the shoulder joints. And then you have the rib cage that fits between the shoulder joints and shows the angle in which Psyduck is facing. So there's the rib cage. The rib cage opens in the front like that. And then you have the sternum, which shows me the center of the rib cage and where the body is facing. So his pelvis is facing one direction, his rib cage is facing another direction, so he's twisting. And then, of course, the arms are going to have elbows, very short, going up to very small hands. So if we're trying to make this creature believable, we really need to understand the full anatomy. And then going from the shoulder, going behind the head to the elbow, actually, from my reference, I can see the elbow there, so I'm going to push it. Actually, I need to move the whole head. This is the advantage of digital sketching. Up, oh, unlock the layer. It's 
So when a background layer is started, you have to rename it in order to fully unlock it, which is annoying. So let me duplicate it. Oops. And move it that way. Come on. Why are you being difficult? Finally. OK, now it's unlocked. So I can move the head about to there and then sketch in the elbow off to the side of the head. Now notice this sketch, I'm doing all of it before I've found any reference. Because it's not hard to find photos of animals. Like I'm going to want to find a photo of maybe um, a platypus for the bill. But how do I know which platypus reference to use? Well, this sketch shows me the necessary angle of each thing. It shows me the angle for the viewer and the angle of the, the reference itself. So notice I haven't put the bill in yet because the bill is part of the jaw and it shows me the angle of the head. And it's overlapping a lot of different things. So let me be sure to do that. And because it's overlapping different things, let me make it a different color. So the head is facing this way. The eyes are at the sides of the head here and here. And so the platypus bill I'll be looking for needs to be at a downward 45 degree angle, like that. OK, so this is my sketch. Now I can start thinking about what references should I look for. And this is just a sketch to understand the anatomy and the angles of each thing I'm looking for. So it's all based on the skeleton. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to use a platypus bill for this. So I might make, make a note of that. I'll just abbreviate because I'm not great at writing with the trackpad. Platypus bill. Now in terms of the heads, He's also got like this kind of crazy stuff. I might look for a plant for this growing out of his head. You don't have to only combine animals. You can combine plants with animals, shells with animals, uh, foods with animals, right? And that can be fun because these are fantasy creatures. So maybe a plant, I'll do PL. Then for the head, what kind of head is smooth and has big eyes? Maybe some sort of frog? We'll see, or I might have to get inventive. What kind of animal has feet like this? Well, they're, they're like duck feet, right? So I'll, I'll start with that assumption. And then what kind of arms and body? These are looking more like, like a seal body. And that's already five references, right? And so I'm, I'm going to build it from there. So that's how you sketch for this project. I'm going to go ahead and save this as my sketch. And then I'm going to start looking for references.